what are the problems faced by the police particularly at the cutting edge level Kunal what is your idea of feminism you're a student of political science what do you mean by zero fir what is pivot of asia policy i know internally everybody is under pressure right sir nervous but it should not get reflected outwardly on your face May I come in, sir? Yes, come in. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, afternoon ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Please introduce yourself to the board. Sir, my name is Kunal Rastogi. I was born in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, but I was brought up in uh, Agartala, Tripura. Post that, sir, I uh, entered into Bits Plani, Plani campus, and have been pursuing civil engineering, and graduated in 2021. post that sir i am trying to convert my dream into reality of becoming a civil servant uh, meanwhile i was also working at topper education limited where i was teaching physics to class 11 and 12 students why did you not uh, go for the campus placement after passing out from uh, bits pilani sir while making my long term career option after uh, during college sir i i felt that i wanted to join civil services which uh, could help me serve the society as well as get job security and satisfaction and for that sir i decided to skip the campus placement in favor of preparing for the civil service you didn't go for the campus placement uh, no, at all sir, I did. okay so you have opted for uh, psir isn't it yes sir so why a civil engineer should opt for a subject like psir sir during uh, choosing my optional subjects sir civil engineering was there but perhaps i all uh, but perhaps when i was making the decision there were few other factors that i had to keep in mind first was the manageability of the syllabus second was regarding the time frame that i had and sir also in my college level i pursued some humanity electives where i got to know about political science and international relations and so i also had a hobby in that so i decided to opt for psir for my uh, optional sir so is a fascinating subject for you no Yes, sir. isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, then why have you not opted for uh, IFS as your first preference? The state chose to join Indian Administrative Service. Sir, I feel that political science and international relations also has the political science part, where it is based with administration and governance. And there, I thought that Indian Administrative Service could also help me pursue my passion, sir. So explain to me. You said you were born at Lucknow, isn't it? Yes, sir. And brought up in uh, Agartala. Agartala. Why so? Uh, sir my father belongs to indian police service from tripura cadre okay. so my formative years of life my, uh, was spent in tripura sir okay your father is in the uh, ips uh, yes, sir. serving uh, state of tripura and uh, what is your uh, preference ips preference in the list sir third option sir third option why why have you kept it so low sir uh, uh, the indian police service was obviously fascinating for me but again uh, in filling up the preferences there were few other factors in mind so career progression and my personal inclination was perhaps the most important thing and since i am interested in international relations i felt that i am better suited temperament wise for indian foreign service and administrative okay you must have seen your father working in the police department from very close quarters sir what are the problems faced by the police particularly at the cutting edge level sir can i take a few yes, moments sure sir firstly that i could uh, first thing that i could think of is the overburdened police force whereby the sanction post is around two, uh, 184 and according to un standard it is 222 but for indian police it is only 142 sir so there is a huge uh, pers- uh, personnel gap sir second sir i think is the facilities in terms of policing sir so still the technological intervention has not taken place and many things are done manually which takes a lot of time for the police uh, people and so the third issue that i face is the mental health of police personnel sir so there has been an increasing trend of fracticide as well as disciplinary issues because of the simple fact that police being overburdened they do not have the time to meet their families and all and so they are very under pressure and things should be done to improve their uh, lifestyle sir from the surgeon's perspective you tell me why people are uh... They rather fear to go to the police station to fire a to lodge an FIR, particularly women. Sir, I think the colonial mentality ingrained the term of police force rather than police service, and since a large element of 
uh, force is inculcated in the police mentality people are quite afraid and second of all sir the accountability uh, is also a, at substandard sir even after the prakashing judgment of 2006 various police accountability commissions have neither taken place and if they have taken place the extractive and ext actionable accountability is not present at the ground level so people fear that if they go to the police station they may be harassed so they decide not to go at all what do you mean by uh, zero fir so zero fir means that you can file uh, your case at any police station regardless of its jurisdiction and then it would be transferred to the appropriate police station for further inquiries and investigation. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Kunal. Ma'am. Recently, uh, UP uh, convened um, Kashi Tamil Sangam, right? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, why such kind of, uh, uh, you know, Sangams or such kind of uh, events are required in India? Ma'am, I think India is a perfect culmination of unity and diversity. Hmm. But it needs to be shown at the ground level as well and that's where such uh, sangams uh, make it reality whereby people from south india get to see and explore the various traditions of north india and vice versa so this basically strengthens the composite culture that is also mentioned in our constitution or is it because uh, south indian people are not so friendly towards north indian people or vice versa uh, ma'am personally i have never seen such thing I okay. think uh, the Ganga Jamuni Taizib of Avad culture is ingrained within each and every Indian citizen and I don't see any reason why there is such apprehension. Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat. Ma'am. How do you see it? Ma'am, it's a positive idiom that perfectly summarizes what our historical and cultural roots signify that we are unity in diversity. Okay, but uh, since we are having diverse culture, so is it possible to, uh, you know, you know, include all culture and develop a kind of uh, resilience towards all culture, accepting their language, accepting their values. Is it happening today? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is happening. I think when Ek Bharat Shres Bharat does not mean that we have a homogenizing culture, okay. that all people follow the same things, but it means that the fundamental core values that describe what an Indian is, that is what is Ek Bharat Shres Bharat. That basically means celebration of diversity, acceptance and tolerance of various cultures and promoting them rather than not celebrating them. So that is what Ek Bharat Shesh Bharat tries to convey. Great. So what is your take on uh, Bharat or India popularizing the two terms? Yes, Would you favor for Bharat or you'll go for India? Ma'am, I think Article 1 perfectly uh, rests the debate. It is India that is Bharat and they could be used interchangeably, ma'am. So then why uh, Bharat instead of India? What it signifies? Ma'am, uh, India was the name that was given based on Sindhu River. Okay. Uh, and the Greeks attributed this name. So currently under the Panchpran principle, we are trying to decolonize our minds. And India, somewhere people see that it is a past of the past relics. Bharat ma'am is an indigenous word that could be traced to either the Aryavarta or the Jainism culture where Bharat was the first king. So, uh, by trying to decolonize our minds, we also need to decolonize our vocabulary. And that's where the word Bharat comes into the play. Okay. Uh, see, Kunal, uh, you have studied PSIR. Ma'am. You are an engineer. So, I may be wrong. Is that power charms you? That's why you are coming into civil services? Uh, no, ma'am. Hmm. I don't think. Power has a capacity to charm people. But that does not mean that people automatically get charmed. I think the basic values that I learned during my college days or for that matter when I was in national service scheme is that the ultimate happiness that one gets is not when it ha he has power but he is able to use whatever capacity he has in delivering happiness to other people and that's where civil services comes to mind. Okay, so power has to empower. Yes, ma'am. Any thinker you can cite from your subject who has actually spoken on power? It can be western thinker also. Uh, and Robert Dahal is there. Okay. Uh, Michael Foucault is what there. What Foucault says? Uh, Foucault has a relatively different uh, stand on power. Uh, Ma'am, based upon Frederick Nietzsche, he said that knowledge is power. Okay. That he basically means to say that power is like a narrative. It's a discourse that runs through the society like blood does through our capillaries. So he says that power cannot be is not a position, but it is when people exercise their discourses or their way they communicate. Similarly, ma'am, another thinker, Hannah Ardent, was also there, who said when people come and, and act in concert with each other, power is born. So it is basically when people 
just like all our citizens come together, they exhibit power. So they are the two different connotations. Okay, great. My last question to you. How much it is possible or is it viable for uh, remote voting if we go for remote voting? So is it viable in India? Is it possible looking into the grassroots level and the rural people around, the migrants? So is it possible? Is it viable? And can I take a few seconds? Yes. Ma'am, I feel it is possible. Hmm. Uh, currently, there was a technology introduced by Bhail regarding uh, remote voting machines where one could vote for 72 constituencies at once. So it basically displays how technology can be leveraged to promote this particular concept. And I think it is a positive concept because given in the globalized world that we are living, migration is an eventuality. Hmm. So this can, help ex uh, this can help people exercise their franchise, but at the same time do not leave their economic jobs that they are currently pursuing. Okay, thank you Kunal. Thank you ma'am. Kunal, ma for how long have you lived in Tripura? Uh, Ma'am, for uh, I started my schooling there until class 10 I was there. Okay, I was reading somewhere that uh, students in Tripura are, uh, there are increasing cases of AIDS among students in Tripura. Yes, ma'am. What is going wrong? Ma'am, I feel in that particular place, sexual education is missing from the school curriculum. So, and but isn't that missing from entire India? Uh, yes, ma'am, it is missing. But in the rest of India, ma'am, the protective gears are easily available as compared to in the northeastern regions because of obvious logistic issues. So that's why the unprotected sex leads to AIDS among the communities, particularly the tribal ones. Okay. Kunal, what is your idea of feminism? You're a student of political science. I'm curious to know what you understand by feminism. Um, according to me, feminism means allowing or uh, a woman is able to achieve whatever she wants to achieve, not from the uh, prism of any other people. So, for example, if a, uh, if a particular female wants to do something with her life, she should have the agency as well as the necessary societal support to achieve that. But that should, does not mean that the male sets its parameters. So, a woman needs to develop in her own accords according to her own capacity and according to her own agency without the intervention of external uh, we have been observing that there is this rising trend of uh, women dropping from workforce in urban areas. Yes, ma'am. Why is that happening, Gunnar? Ma'am, firstly, uh, there is an inverted U curve, ma'am, that basically hypothesizes that as women are in the urban areas, they are going for higher education instead of workforce. So, once they come out of this education, the workforce for women would automatically increase. Secondly, ma'am, the safety issue is also there whereby women do not feel as protected as they should be and so they drop out. Thirdly ma'am, as the income is rising and the patriarchal tendency is there, the, the male, when they start to have earn enough, they tell their uh, spouses to stay at home and they do the job. So I think these three parameters when acting in confluence reduces Kunal, who is your best friend? Ma'am, my mother. You don't have any friend, you know, apart from your mother, I mean, somebody of your age who is your friend. Ma'am, I think a friend is someone that you can talk to anything about. And I feel most comfortable sharing my intimate things with my mother. That's why I feel okay, she is my best friend. Okay, we call up your mother and we ask her uh, some weaknesses of Kunal. Yes, What do you think she will mention? Ma'am, I think uh, my fondness of cooking and eating uh, has uh, made me a little bit uh, on the heavier side. And I think uh, that is one of my weaknesses that I could think about. And she will also be Kunal, saying. don't you feel that cooking for you might be hobby, but for so many women in India? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, it's need of the art to feed their family. They have to cook. It's a burden that they carry. Yes, Isn't that sad? Uh, unfortunately, ma'am, that is the sad reality because of our patriarchal mindset. But yes, things are changing. And uh, with the democratic families that are being instituted because of liberalization and globalization and economic independence, uh, things are changing. Uh, I see your hobbies watching science fiction. Yes, ma'am. If you had to bring one science fiction to reality, which one would you bring? Ma'am, I think the one movie that comes to uh, mind with regards to application of knowledge. Ma'am, I think the uh, movie is Avatar that I would like to bring into reality. Uh, si uh, simply because in Avatar, we have seen that how uh, humanity, because of its greed, is trying to destroy other worlds. But at the same time, the, when uh, natural people, when they are co-inhabiting with their nature and environment, they are able to bring a more sustainable lifestyle. So if we try to not copy the humanity that is shown there and try to imitate the local indigenous people, perhaps we would also be able to save our earth. Okay, my last question to you is, uh, 
tell this board why should we select you and not other candidates that we have interviewed? Ma'am, I feel that my hard work, my sincerity is one aspect that the board could uh, look into. But if yes, there are other candidates who are better than me, then perhaps the board should be going for them. Thank you. Kunal. Sir. You have some exposure to Tripura also and you are a student of political science, right? Sir. Why the left front government ruled Tripura for such a long time? What was the reason behind it? Now, of course, the government has changed. but They have a very, I mean, long history of ruling Tripura. Why? So, I think for the simple fact that they are cadre-based parties. So, when cadre-based left parties are there, they do usually rule for a long period of time because people are associated directly with the party. And so, they do not want to vote for other alternatives. And that's why the left rule is there. But once the party changes, the cadre disseminates, and then it is very difficult for left to come again into power, like we saw in West Bengal. Yeah. Tell me some of the uh, tribal groups of Tripura. Name just few. Uh, sir, Debarma are there. Uh, Jamatias. Right. Uh, Riangs yeah. are there. Uh, Hajongs are there, sir. Bru refugees. Uh, okay. Brus are there. Right. Tell us something about the Chakma refugee if issues. So, Chakma are indigenously Buddhist in origin. They started their journey from uh, uh, Chinese region, Myanmar. Mm. And then when they were persecuted, they came to Arunachal Pradesh and then they came to India. Uh, came to Tripura, sir. So, what was the issue? Uh, sir, as far as I uh, know, it was religious persecution that basically led them to flee from there, sir. And you have also shown your interest in Asian geopolitics, right? Sir. What is pivot of Asia policy? So, the pivot of Asia policy was started by Honorable President Barack Obama in 2015 mm. when it decided to uh, reorient its attention towards the Asian region because of growing threats from China as compared to its Middle East policy or for that matter its European security architecture. Yeah, and what is the importance of India as one of the major axes of this pivot of Asia policy? Sir, according to the US national security doctrine, it has followed an island chain strategy whereby India forms a pivotal part in countering China both through the maritime corridor as well as through the Himalayan corridor. So, India basically forms one of the most important pillars there. Right. And why Indian Ocean is uh, so important for India? from geopolitical and geostrategic point of view? So, in terms of geopolitics, sir, uh, India has always wanted the Indian Ocean region to be free from extraterritorial powers like China, which could perhaps use that particular region in future for military incursions. So, strategically speaking, the Indian Ocean region hosts more than 90% of the global trade routes, the sea lines of communication. So, uh, securing that is vital for India's economic interdependence, inter independence, sir. So, these two are the major regions. Yes. Major reasons for India trying to become the net security provider for the Indian Ocean region. And your take on the delicate balancing of India in the uh, West Asia region between the tripods, which is Israel, the uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran. I mean, how India is balancing it? Do you think, is it a fit policy? Sir, the Central Asia, the Middle Eastern region is important for India because of its labor force, its economy and oil. So, for Israel point of view, sir, it has followed the dehyphenation poli de policy whereby it is uh, treating Israel in its own merits because of its agricultural technology and defense. For Iran, sir, uh, because of its Chabahar port and its access to Central Asian region perhaps, and most importantly Afghanistan and also Iran is a supplier of oil to us. For Saudi Arabia, sir, it, uh, India has uh, maintained its posture regarding its uh, in. Uh, uh, engagement with the Palestine-Israel issue and because of the fact sir, that a large number of Indian diaspora live and work in Saudi Arabia and UAE where a large amount of remittances also come. So, it has tried to balance these three things so that national interest is secured. Right. And you have also worked as a, a financial derivative analyst for SMC Global. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So, what was basically your portfolio? I mean, what kind of portfolio you were managing? Sir, uh, I was in uh, stock market research, sir. Right. So, my basic job was to analyze a company based upon its ratios and macroeconomic fundamentals so that we can pitch that particular stock to potential investors. Yeah, so right now the stock markets are at a, at a historic high level. Sir. Is it real or is it a bubble? Sir, I think it is real. Uh, given the fact that the uh, whole economy according to IMF is facing imminent recession, mm -hmm. India has become a sweet spot and carrying 16% of the global growth. Moreover, sir, because of the liquidity easing in US, 
there is a 1,60,000 crore incursion of funds from foreign portfolio investors, which basically means that the substan that the foundations of our stock market is very strong, and that's why the share market is rising. Thank you, Kunal. So, so Kunal, uh, in recent times, you must have observed that OTT platforms have gained a lot of popularity, and this is to that extent that it is now surpassing the big screen productions. So, what could be the possible reasons for this sudden growth of the OTT platforms and their popularity? Sir, the first thing is ease of accessibility because it is a very democratic uh, platform whereby users can easily access it. Secondly, sir, the freedom, uh, the artistic freedom that is there in the OTT platform, which is not the case with movies where the censor board usually intervenes. And third, sir, is the uh, low budget films that could be created and posted in the OTT platforms, which is not the case with the movies because of the distribution network required. Since you have mentioned the censor board, can you tell me how these OTT platforms are regulated? The kind of content that goes on air on an OTT platform, how this content is regulated? Sir, it is done by Ministry of uh, Information and Broadcasting. Do we have uh, some specific guidelines, rules or regulations? Uh, yes, sir, we do. Under the IT rules 2021, there have been guidelines set for this particular uh, OTT platforms. Okay. So, my next question to you is, in the light of the contemporary developments in the field of artificial intelligence, uh, what role do you think that AI can play in the uh, domain of geopolitics and international relations? Sir, so militarily speaking, AI is going to control or is on the verge of controlling the battlefields because most of our systems are based upon automated uh, networks, be it the UAV drones or the missile launching system. So politically, sir, AI has the power to shape the communications and the language in which the politicians uh, interact. Uh, economically speaking, sir, AI, uh, the companies which are involved in AI production and management are going to be the world leaders just like Google was for its search engine. So many economies are trying, many economies and corporates are trying to leverage this AI for potential production. And fourth, sir, I think a labor issue is going to be a major thing. When AI goes into the markets, particularly in the Middle East and uh, USA, where a large Indian diaspora involved in IT technologies are there, it may further strain relations between them. Okay. So in AI, there is a technology called deep fake. So with regards to the development of this technology, what challenges do you see in the terms of international relations and managing the relations between uh, the countries? So the first thing that comes to mind is misinformation. Perhaps the defect technology could be used to alter the uh, pro alter and process image according to one's liking and then portray a negative image like many cases were also uh, emerging out of e Russia-Ukraine conflict or the Israel-Palestine war. Secondly, sir, uh, I think defects would all be could also be utilized to manufacture voice. Voice impersonations is also a possible uh, possibility out of the deep fake. So this could be utilized for uh, jamming or altering the communications. Good, good. Can you tell me which edition of the G20 summit was recently concluded? Sir, the 18th. Okay. Sir. And uh, what were the key takeaways of this summit? Sir, can I take a few seconds? Name any three. Sir, inclusion of African Union. Okay. The Indian, uh, Indian Middle East Economic Corridor and the National Bio Biofuel Alliance. So now uh, G20 will become G21? No, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm not sure, sir, about this. Fine. What is RCC? So it is reinforced cement concrete. So, uh, follow up last question. How is it different from the normal cement? Sir, it is basically concrete, but it is reinforced by steel so that the tensile strength is improved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have you heard about uh, Ganga Vilas cruise? <laughs> yes, sir, I have. What could be the environmental concerns in this cruise? Sir, first is regarding biodiversity, where it could uh, threaten the inhabitants of the population like the Indian Gangetic Dolphin. Second, sir, where uh, a large amount of dredging takes place so that the minimum amount of uh, minimum submergence that the ship is required is taken and that dredging process could harm the environment. Uh, third, sir, is regarding the passengers. They may be into pollution, polluting the uh, uh, Gangetic ecosystems. Good. What do you mean by a, a soft state? Sir, a soft state is one which is not able to implement the laws that it has legislated. Do you think India is a soft state? I don't think so, sir. Uh, India has able time and again to enforce um, most of its legal obligations apart from few sectors, sir. And this is manifested by the 
peaceful relatively peaceful environment that india has compared to its neighboring boundaries okay and what is uh, a deep state so deep state are the major stakeholders which play behind the screen uh, behind the scene and try to control the upfront uh, obligations and interactions of the government could you give us two examples of deep state so one is the big corporate entities uh, which fund the elections like in us case the super pacs uh second sir it could be the military of uh, pakistan which plays behind the cards to alter the environment okay thank you very much your interview is over thank we you sir off. should i wait outside thank you sir may i come in sir yes come in sit down thank you sir so this is your uh, first interview or second interview sir second interview second sir. interview when was the first sir 2021 this day i have this time uh, hopefully mask and shield will not be required uh, yes sir but two three things i must tell you because you are otherwise a wonderful candidate sir your non verbal communications were problems with that only okay sir number one lot of hand movement sir every time you are trying to explain both your hands were moving like this sir that has to be curbed okay sir no no hand movement and you have to make a very conscious effort to see that there is no hand movement sir not only that on the top of that legs were also moving, moving sir right sir. isn't it sir so hand movement leg movement, movement that has to be completely stopped isn't it sir because it gives a very indecent uh, this thing okay, impression sir. so all your good work all your good thinking will go slightly in vain if you are not able to control your sir. hand movements and leg movements and then the your sitting posture try to bring both your legs closer as close as possible okay sir Don't try to spread out your legs. Try to bring out, uh, bring closer. So that is one important advice to you. Sir. Otherwise, your entry was all right. You entered, uh, you entered like a confident person. You interacted with us confidently, clearly. That is very important. You had views on various issues, and uh, you explained, uh, expressed your views again very clearly and confidently. Those are good things. Sir. taking a cue from your last interview make sure that you don't pass any negative comment on anything sir like you have been working as an educator sir so we didn't because of the paucity of time we didn't ask you questions related to that some questions may be asked there also don't try to give a negative connotation to that right sir whatever work you are do- doing you should be showing enjoying that work yes sir and betterment is everybody works for betterment right sir. in advancement in career you are looking for a better career in life right so sir. nobody can stop you from there but don't just to prove your point don't look down upon anything, anything. right sir. that is very important otherwise barring all these two three things and you are an excellent candidate so no doubt about it you are coming from a police family you said prakash singh judgment prakash singh committee was there right it? so judgment i don't know what context you said uh, judgment uh, so the supreme court supreme ruling. court judgment that I understand that we got confused between the two right sir arising out of recommendations right. and all that yes, so sir. they you have to be very careful about choosing the words sir so the problems faced by the police department the problems faced by the public with the police department the it initiatives which have been taken in the police department lot of it initiatives have been taken sir just keep an idea of that because that could be a question of a discussion right as, sir. as because your father happens to be from the indian police service sir you have very uh, uh, hardly any time uh, well second is your interview right very first day right you are, sir you are going so be confident be honest sir that i keep on telling each and every candidate don't compromise on your honesty sir so you are going to be a civil servant and honesty comes with a premium sir so no guess work is uh, work no surmises no conjectures you know you know you don't know 
plainly and flatly said, sir, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Sir. But don't speak based on half knowledge or no knowledge. Right, sir. Isn't Otherwise, cooking, uh, avadi based fusion, I mean, what kind of questions will be asked, uh, very difficult to. But these questions are generally asked to see you as a person. Sir. Whether you can construct your thoughts, uh, you, you can conjure up your thoughts and ideas constructively or not, that is one thing. Whether under pressure, under duress, you are able to be on your own. Sir. You don't buckle under pressure. Number three, you are communication skill is good right, number sir. four your thoughts are well balanced so it is not taking any extreme uh, the view on anything so these are the qualities of a civil servant sir. because once you go to the job then you must have seen your father also the how difficult it is to manage a, a job from right. an outsider's perspective one doesn't understand what all a civil servant goes through sir. so this, this very purpose of personality test is that only so don't err on that side. Just be your natural self, your normal self. Sir. Honest, forthright, speak what you know. Don't get into any argument. <laughs> yes, sir. Isn't it? Don't sir. be judgmental. And you will be getting good marks, no doubt about it. Okay. All the best to you. Sir, yeah. a few uh, questions, sure. sir. Uh, sir, eye contact last time, uh, my eye contact was very, uh, not very directed. So. I started to looking at one person and then see the I don't mode. think that is, I mean, if you ask me personally, Sir. Primarily, you should be talking to me if I am talking to you. Right, sir. But if it is a long discussion, then I can, can, I can give a very fleeting glance. But it should not uh, look artificial that you are looking from this side to that side. So this time when I was speaking, no, was it? this way, absolutely. Otherwise, I would have told, who, told you. Right, sir. So, it was absolutely fine. You, have, you must have worked on that. Yes, So, sir. this time it's good. So, sir, don't worry about that. Secondly, sir, my articulation. Uh, did I take, uh, last time also I felt that I was too... In fact, what happens, prompt. you see, na, one, once or twice, if you say, sir, may I take some time, right, all sir. right, but it becomes hackneyed, then there is a problem. Sir. Again and again, you are asking, sir, may I take... So, take a few seconds to collect your thoughts. Doesn't matter. For that, you not, need not seek any permission okay, from anybody. Sir. Just few seconds only. It should not be a longer pause from your side. Sir. And then you go ahead. Once or twice where you think that really you require to then only, think, huh, then only. Otherwise, you know everything, just you have to conjure up your ideas. That's it, isn't it? Sir, any other thing that I should be keeping in mind, sir? Uh, your dress and all, you'll be going in this dress only. No, sir, I will be changing it. Changing your dress. So, go in a proper dress, shoes, or ye, beard, yes, rakho ye, kya? Nahin, nahin, sir. Uh, you clean will be sh shaving, shaving it also. Yes, sir. So, go uh, clean shaved and uh, sh polished shoes. And with a smile on face. Yes, sir. Isn't it? I know internally everybody is under pressure. Right, you sir. You are nervous. But it should not get reflected outwardly on your face. Right, sir. Okay. Well, all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.